Hello everyone, welcome to Mansfield Stadium and our Week 2 Prep Rally along with Jason Galloway and Dennis Semrau. I'm Rob Hernandez here on WisconsinPrepZone.com and guys, I don't know if we could have asked for a more exciting Week 1 to the high school football season, especially as it relates to the teams that play here at Mansfield uh, in the Big 8 Conference. So Madison West, Madison Memorial, both winners on, in Week 1 and Dennis, uh, I'll start with you. We, we've both been around a long time. I don't know if there's ever been a better week for city football. Three wins and a team in Madison East that almost pulled off the upset of the year. Boy, that was a fantasy football uh, player's delight. 42-41 to 41, Memorial in East. West with a big win over Verona. Sorry, Rob, for the, right. the hometown Wildcats. But uh, great start for the Big 8. Uh, I'll follow it, Sun Prairie game. Jason, you got to cover that. Uh, everything we hope for and more. And an upset uh, for some people, but for those that know La Follette, uh, it was a great first win for Scott Swanson and some great video of uh, Swanee getting dumped on with the ice bucket. No challenge, right? Oh, that was for the win. His first career win as a head coach. Congrats, Scott. Well, and Jason, you were at that game, as Dennis said, uh, uh, and we talked about it last week on Prep Rally. It was one that was going to tell us a lot about the Big 8 this year, the, the defending champion in Sun Prairie, the up-and-comer in La Follette. What were your thoughts coming away from that game? Well, I was really impressed with La Follette. Uh, I mean, their front seven dominated most of the game. Uh, they, you know, they only had three returning starters on defense, so that was a big question mark for them. They really answered a lot of questions. Uh, Khalil Kopis, their running back, looked better than ever, and uh, the, you know, the game wasn't even as close as the score indicated. It was a seven-point game, but La Follette was up by 21 late sure. in the fourth quarter. Sun Prairie came back. I think this is more of a, you know, La Follette's here to contend for the title rather than Sun Prairie falling off, you know, a whole lot. So I, you know, I was really impressed with La Follette, and I think, I think they're one of the top contenders going forward. You know, as Dennis had the niceness to mention, I was here at Mansfield last week as the, uh, as the Verona Wildcats uh, lost a, a pretty good lead, guys, and, uh, and credit Madison West. Those kids uh, under first-year coach J.C. Dawkins didn't give up, and they come back to win. So as Dennis said, we got Memorial over East uh, in, a, in a rally. we got West over Verona in a rally. We've got La Follette over, over uh, Sun Prairie, and, uh, and now we go ahead to week two, and the games are almost as big, if not bigger. And I know, Jason, we've got you down to cover Middleton-Verona, which on paper was going to be the, the game to end all games, M perhaps Middleton's biggest test. But after week one, I'm not sure we can say that. Yeah, maybe not. We'll have to see how Verona rebounds. I mean, like you mentioned, West was had such an – we didn't expect a whole lot from them with three returning starters. And, but, uh, you know, they get that comeback against Verona. Now this becomes a, a really huge game for Verona. If they've, they had hopes of, of bouncing back from that season last year and competing, competing at the top of the Big 8 again. And now if they fall to 0-2, that's going to be a, a real blow to them. And you know, Middleton looked um, like we expected they would against Parker, allowing only 51 total yards. That defense looks really legit. And uh, it's going to be really, it's going to tell a lot about Verona uh, coming into the second game if they can compete with Middleton or not. And Dennis, uh, all of a sudden the Memorial La Follette game over at Lusier on Friday night becomes a huge game. Uh, is Memorial as vulnerable as that rally, uh, the needing to come from behind against the team in the East that didn't fare very well last year? And is La Follette as good as they, you know, as they look to be against the Sun Prairie team? That, that stands to be a huge game. It does. Uh, coaches say week one to week two is the most improvement, and uh, I'm sure Memorial is working on shoring up that defense a little bit there. But that's a team that's uh, got a lot of good skill players, so and, and a very wide open offense. So I expect them to pull out of points on the board. But uh, defensively, that's where they're going to really work this week. And of course, West and East over at Lusier this week. Uh, um, I'm sorry, right here at Mansfield this week uh, in a game that you know a week ago, you know. People figure just play the game, they'll fit in where they may. But now, you know, if East, uh, said to be very big, very physical, can give West a battle uh, and maybe pull off the upset that just barely eluded the Pergolders last week, it could be a huge year for City football. Guys, week two of the uh, regular season, still a, a week with non-conference games. Dennis, as we turn to your area of expertise, the Badger Conference, is there one game that really stands out as being a uh, perhaps a defining crossover game? I know they don't count in the conference standings, but uh, when you when you know that conference play is coming next week, uh, I'm sure they're big for momentum. Yeah, Monona Grove, uh, Division Two state, just Division Three state champs from last year. Unbeaten streak ended last week. Mount Horb, uh, Barneville rally, 29-27 win, and like. Uh, Jason was talking about not one start 0-2 in the conference. Well, 
it's a non-conference game, but MG doesn't want to start 0-2. They have to go to DeForest, which uh, won 14-7, rallied, and uh, played some outstanding defense in the end. Interesting, uh, Sally, their defensive end, uh, went down expecting to talk to a number seven. It was him. He, he had to switch jerseys. They didn't tell anybody in the press box. So the PA guy was announcing two sacks in the last series to the wrong guy. So uh, we, we gave him some credit in the uh, State Journal on uh, Saturday. But uh, DeForest looked very good defensively, very sound. New quarterback Hunter Wilson, who was their starting safety last year, and uh, they have uh, Sackman, Jer- um, Jared Sackman, uh, sure. 177 yards rushing. So DeForce looks pretty good at home for the home opener, but MG is going to be pretty hungry. Around the area, a couple big games to watch. Uh, we'll have Dennis uh, at the, uh, what is it, Lodi? And at Edgerton at Lodi, you get to see Ricky Williams last week. 408 yards, including an 85-yard punt return, 100 yards in uh, receiving, and uh, four touchdowns rushing, uh, 169 yards. Uh, he was an All-State player last year, came right out, uh, wanted to be an All-State player this year. And then, of course, uh, you also have uh, some good matchups in Week 2. Broadhead Judah, which had a big win uh, over River Valley last week in Week 1 against Evansville-Albany. The Evansville-Albany co-op uh, thought to be a contender in the, in the uh, Rock Valley North. Took one on the chin against Union Grove. That'll be a big game. Darlington coming off a big loss to Platteville in Week 1. Goes up to New Glarus uh, to play New Glarus-Monticello. The uh, New Glarus-Monticello almost knocked off Edgerton last week. So a lot of big non-conference games to go with the assortment of terrific games in the Big 8 Conference. And all all things you can look for on our live blog Friday night on WisconsinPrepZone.com, and then of course in your Saturday morning Wisconsin State Journal and online at WisconsinPrepZone.com. We'll be back here next week with another prep rally for Jason Galloway and, and Dennis Semro. I'm Rob Hernandez. Thanks for watching. We'll see you at the stadium.